Good morning, everyone. Oh, see some of you from the South and others. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, there we go. Um, I'm an urban planner, a city planner. Now, some of you, um, some of you may be uh, thinking, okay, what exactly is a city planner? And even though I know this room is full with some of the best and the brightest, I'm in no way offended because my mom, when I graduated, uh, with a degree in city planning, she was beaming with pride and said, okay, now, baby, exactly what will you be doing? <laughs> um, and so I'm gonna tell you what I told her. Uh, a city planner is someone who designs, studies, plans, builds, and fixes cities. And over the last 12 years, I've had the great, great benefit, uh, the great uh, experience of doing just that in what I believe is the best city in the United States of America, Baltimore, Maryland. I was right, you are the best and brightest. <laughs> um, and you know, I know some of you have seen The Wire, and let me tell you, uh, <laughs> It, it does not give you the full story. Uh, remember, it is TV, and just like I know you're smart enough to know uh, that even though you might like Dexter, that Miami is not full of a bunch of uh, uh, serial killers. Um, Baltimore is a, is a great place uh, to live, and I would encourage all of you uh, who don't live there uh, to, to leave wherever you live and come there. <laughs> but I'm not here to talk about Baltimore in particular. I'm here to talk about a new urban renewal. Now, I grew up in Jersey City, New Jersey. It's one of the most densely populated cities uh, in the country, and uh, it, uh, it is a special place. Uh, it was, it's special in a number of ways. Uh, Jersey is special. Um, uh, but uh, what the reason I mentioned uh, Jersey City, beyond the fact that I want to give a shout out to where I grew up, is uh, the fact that it is right next door uh, to, uh, to New York City. Uh, and the Holland Tunnel connects both, of, uh, both, both cities, and I cannot talk about urban renewal uh, without talking about, about New York. And I know you're thinking, oh, New York, it's no Baltimore. Uh, but <laughs> uh, I, have to, I have to talk about New York and about Robert Moses when I, when I talk about urban renewal. Now, Robert Moses, and usually when you say his name, you're supposed to say Robert Moses, 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 like that. Because he was, in fact, um, probably in the U.S. history, the most influential, most powerful city planner uh, in the history of the nation. Not just because of what he did in Baltimore, uh, in, uh, not just because of what he did uh, in New York, um, Baltimore is always on my brain, but because of the fact that he influenced urban planning uh, throughout the nation. He did a lot of good and a lot of not so good. Uh, the good, I mean, he added over two million acres of parkland to, to, uh, to New York, um, built over 600 playgrounds. He, uh, Central Park became a kind of a park for, for the entire city and not just elite under his direction. Uh, he did a lot of great things, um, but he also did some wicked, wicked, wicked things. Um, one of those things being that, you know, the, the Dodgers end up moving because of him. Um, but bigger than that, he really had a view of urban planning in which neighborhoods and people really didn't matter. Uh, he saw neighborhoods as, as roads and, and skyscrapers, and, um, and if people had to be moved, uh, regardless of what, they, uh, what kind of those communities looked like, um, who was there, it didn't matter, because he had a vision and he would do what was necessary to get it done. Here's a, uh, and it extended beyond, uh, beyond New York. Here in, uh, this is in East uh, Fayetteville, uh, Florida wiped out a neighborhood to build a, a major road and, uh, um, and bridge. They did the same uh, here in, in the great city of Baltimore. We call this affectionately the highway to nowhere. Uh, they tore up, as you can see, they tore up a neighborhood um, uh, to build a highway that they never completed uh, and uh, ripped apart a healthy uh, neighborhood uh, that was not necessarily aesthetically pretty, uh, but it was healthy, and I'm going to talk about that health. You look at these images, um, and many of you probably have the, uh, the view of, we need to, what do you do? You take it down. Um, 
You say, oh, they're boarded up, there's nothing that can be done, uh, there's high rates of vacancy, crime, oh my gosh, um, we need to start over again. You look at this, this street and you say, oh, you know, sure, there's one or two occupied properties, um, but the smart thing to do, the economic thing to do, would be to start over. That's crap. And uh, that's a... Uh, and it's, it's a highly technical term we learned in the <laughs> But it's crap because you look at the grid and the easy thing is to erase the lines and redraw. You know, the SimCity approach, and uh, believe me, I loved, loved the game, played it far too much, but the SimCity approach of kind of starting over again isn't necessarily the right approach because that really is not the city, what you see right there. That's the city. The new urban renewal um, is an approach to uh, looking at the city and in terms of the social networks that exist within the infrastructure in our cities. Some of the hardest hit areas, some of the most depressed areas, some of the areas that look like hell uh, is not really hell. Um, that there are people there um, who, who have relationships, strong, real relationships in which they're communicating with each other, looking out for each other, um, and we just, we just look at this and forget about the people who are there. Um, those networks, those social networks beyond the kind of the Facebook world, but those social networks that are real, where people are interacting, um, should be valued, should be taken care, uh, and uh, should be taken care of, and should be invested in if we're serious about rebuilding our our cities. True friends are hard to come by. Right? <laughs> All of you are probably on Facebook, probably have thousands of friends. You probably know about 20 of them, right? <laughs> Those true friends, though, are real, right? Those true friends, those relationships are real and they're valuable. And within our cities, some of the hardest hit areas have those real relationships in place. So how do we invest in them? How do we make sure that this picture of our cities is, is something that we, we build upon? And so what I learned as a city planner in, in, in Baltimore and as a developer in Baltimore is that if you're really serious about rebuilding neighborhoods, then you have to invest before um, investing in the physical structures, you have to invest in, in those, those in institutions, those structures that value these people. Uh, and so that includes the, the parks, that includes the schools, that includes making those investments in the rec centers uh, and in the urban gardens, because that helps to support and buttress this network before you begin to touch the buildings. I'm going to end this with this. This is Jesus' social network. <laughs> now, I'm not asking... I'm not, <laughs> I'm not asking any of you to change your faith, uh, to walk on water, to uh, change water into wine, or anything like that. But what I'm going to say to you is this, is that if one person, one individual, uh, working closely with 12, uh, could, could change the course of history, uh, that if we... <laughs> If we take that same approach of looking in, in our cities at those influencers, those people who are in positions in which they are touching other individuals in a very positive way and, in, and invest in them, we can transform our cities in a much, much more significant way than just tearing down and rebuilding a structure. Humans are what make our cities great. Thank you.